typical sales trip this week. Let's see what happens. It's an afternoon flight, so I'm in the office for the morning. I grab a coffee and use the time to send out a few emails. At around midday, the car service collects us and takes us directly to Heathrow. Nice and easy. I'm traveling with Paul and he has enough points to get us into the BA lounge. There's a free bar and restaurant. I grab a coffee and then we head to the gate. It's good. Good content. It's good, good content. Typically we fly premium economy on the transatlantics, given the distance and wanting to arrive fresh. I settle in for the long flight, use the onboard Wi-Fi to polish off a few slides that I'm going to be pitching later in the week, and then just sit back and relax. After a few hours, we arrive in a cloudier than expected Los Angeles and we clear customs without any dramas. We grab some food from whatever happens to be open in the terminal at that time, a recurring theme on trips like this, and I grab a coffee as we've got a 45 minute drive across LA to the hotel. The drive goes smoothly and we check in. Luckily, I get a room that somehow already contains my camera. I wake up very much on UK time and use the early hours to interact with colleagues back home. I then prep my luggage for the day, getting today's work clothes together and moving key items to the top that I might need. Everything's closed this early in the morning, but the rooms always have a coffee maker, plus this glorious stuff, half and half. I grab breakfast alone and wait for Paul to join me. It's typical to choose a hotel near the meeting, so we only have a five minute drive to meeting number one. However, meeting number two is a three hour drive all the way the other side of LA, hence getting a rental. These long trips across cities usually provide the more interesting food stop opportunities. With our two Monday meetings complete, we have a free afternoon, so I insist that we stop at the beach. I change in the car park and get a quick dunk in the Pacific. Capitalizing on these small opportunities for fun is well worth it. Another drive, another meal stop, drop off the rental, and a hotel at the airport for an early flight the next day. This is a pretty typical hotel. There's a bar and a pantry, but I wouldn't rely on it for nutrition because it's usually just candy and extremely expensive. This room is relatively nice, two beds, coffee pod machine, and a walk-in shower. It's about 9.30 and I'm gonna turn in for the night. I've got about six hours before I have to be up again to fly to Minneapolis in the morning. Uh, I've just spent the last 30 minutes booking the next hotel and the car hire for tomorrow. So, see you in the morning. With a body clock still very much on UK time, it's not uncommon to join a Teams call with UK colleagues in the gap between waking up and the hotel breakfast becoming available. Again, we chose this hotel for its proximity to meetings, so the lobby becomes our base for the day. Paul capitalizes on these moments to stay on top of things, but the general etiquette is that we are here for the in-person meetings. As such, you should save your alertness for those, and anything you can get done on top is a bonus. 
On this particular trip, I've been taking these spare moments to capture the footage. On the way back to the airport, we make an intentional detour to squeeze in a tiny bit of tourism. We stop by the famous Matt's Bar for an original Juicy Lucy, a challenge eating in the car, but my shirt survives. MSP is one of the nicer airports to kill time in, and the toilets here double as tornado shelters. Luckily, I've never seen it needed. Internal flights are always economy, but airlines aren't made equal, with Delta being noticeably more comfortable. We get to Boston and stay in another generic airport hotel. A note on my luggage, we always go carry-on only to reduce the risk of lost luggage or long waits at the reclaim carousel. I find the two carry-on items here more than enough for a week trip with space for camera gear and souvenirs. I use the pre-breakfast slot for a quick workout. By this time in a trip, all the sitting on planes and cars is starting to flare up my recurring back pain, so I gotta squeeze in movement whenever I can. Here in Boston, we revert to the more usual transportation choice, Ubers. We've got two meetings in the same building today and we're allowed to use their canteen to fill the gap. An impressive variety of food options and we even find a ping pong table. With all meetings complete, we grab lunch down the hill and toast to a good trip. I'm staying one more night in Boston so I can avoid the overnight flight, so this gives me an evening to explore. However, I'm not very central and I'm quite tired, so I don't go too far. It's an early flight, which means more seats in the terminal, but few choices for breakfast. You take what you can get. The transatlantics provide a meal, and I'd say it's pretty decent. I land at Heathrow to be collected by the car service, direct back to home or office. I go to the office, as I typically leave my car here whilst travelling. So there you have it. That's uh, that's pretty much the long and short of a typical sales trip. Um, I hope that I've managed to demystify the experience somewhat for you. And um, thanks for watching. Hang on, let me stop recording. No, it's too late. Put it in. Keep it on. Keep it on.